In this video, I'll be testing the differences between a normal tire, a sealant tire, and the latest generation run flat tire, and finding out exactly how much abuse these two tires can take. Tires are complicated things, and run flat tires, which need the ability to support a car deflated, are extra complicated. This, in the past, has given run flat tires a bad reputation for reduced comfort and reduced wet grip. But I want to know how much of this is down to the tire and how much of this is down to the run flat technology. To find out, I've needed the help of a tire company that has the run flat tire and normal tire in the same compound. And luckily, Hankook have come to the rescue. Their award winning Hankook Kinergy 4S2, which also won this year's tire reviews all season test, go check that out, has exactly the same compound in their regular tire and their run flat tire. And Hankook have been kind enough to support this test and made a seal version of the tire specifically for this test so we can test all three, which is amazing. Hopefully, as you're watching this channel, I don't need to explain to you what a regular tire is and a run flat tire you're probably familiar with. It is a tire that has more support in the sidewall compared to a regular tire. Although this fourth generation Hankook run flat system only has about 10% more material, so some of the drawbacks in comfort and grip are hopefully eliminated. A sealant tire, they're a bit newer to the market. It's essentially exactly the same as a regular tire, except it has a very complicated sealant material bonded to the inside, which means in a puncture event in the center of the tread, the nail can go straight through, come straight back out, and the sealant will seal it instantly. Obviously, I had to test just how good the sealant system is, so we created this torture test with four long nails. Not being satisfied with just four punches, we ran over the bed of nails again and again and again and again, totaling 16 punches in the same part of the tread. Amazingly, the tire lost no pressure, and the next day I even did some driving on the abused tire without any problems. Now we know the theory of the tires, let's go find out the data. Hankook have kindly invited me to their very impressive proving ground in Korea, where I can test the grip of the tires and most importantly, the comfort levels because they have very advanced comfort tracks. Should be a really interesting test. Can this fourth generation run flat tire really get close to a normal tire? Let's go find out. Because I don't want to spend this entire video being mean about run flat tires, which I'm a little bit worried I'm going to have to be, I'm gonna start this video where I think the run flat has the best chance and that is dry handling. Why do I think this? Well, I know BMW famously won't fit run flat tires to the BMW M cars, their ultimate handling cars. And I've always wondered why? Because in theory, a run flat tire with its much stronger support in the sidewall will give you better steering response and better handling qualities. And I'm happy to say my theory is correct but not quite as I expected. The run flat tire definitely did have sharper steering. So bearing in mind, this is an all season tire. It's not designed for out and out dry handling, but the 4S2 is very good in dry handling. It's one of the better all season tires, that's for sure. And the steering response on the normal tire and the seal tire, which was pretty much exactly the same. I couldn't tell the difference, uh, was very good. You had uh, quite good off steering or on, st on center steering reactions. So as you turned, the, the tire turned very quickly, but then there was a secondary delay, which we all know about these kind of tires. You get, you steer, then it starts turning, and then the steering forces start building up afterwards. So there's a sort of a slight delay as the load builds up. The run flat tire didn't eliminate this, but it did make this better. So the car did feel noticeably quicker on steering, especially once those steering forces started to build up, the car just dug into the turn. The tire wanted to turn more and the steering weight was a little bit heavier, which kind of made it feel all the more sporty, but these differences are quite slight. What I didn't expect, and this surprised me, is the at limit communication. Perhaps this is where BMW get their no run flat thing from for the M cars. The at limit communication was definitely reduced by a small margin. That means you had less information about when the tire was breaking into slip, whether that be understeer slip like this, or whether that be on corner exit when you're applying the throw. I just felt myself more surprised by the fact I started pushing with understeer, and this is not the most powerful golf in the world. So there was the drawback of the run flat. As for the ultimate grip and time, well, over a one minute 20 lap, 
they were less than half a second apart. So that's something like 0.25%, which is essentially the same. So in terms of outright grip, the run flat technology in the sidewall, and yes, it is a little bit heavier, it doesn't give you any negative drawbacks in terms of grip, and it doesn't give you any positives either, because I guess the compound and the tyre is working very well in both versions of this 4S2 in the dry. The braking, similar story. 0.1 meter between all three of the tires from 100 kilometers an hour 62 miles an hour which again is allowable variance within the test it's less than a percent so in the dry in terms of ultimate outright performance they're all identical in terms of steering response and reaction actually at road speed so at below limits I actually prefer, I do prefer the run flat because you just get a slightly quicker steering reaction, a slightly quicker steering response, and you can just enjoy that directness of the tire more than you can on a normal tire. But like I said, the negative is the uh, the absolute limit feedback does get a little bit reduced in, in the tire, I guess. So the dry, which was the easy bit for the run flat, we all know that, has proven to be very impressive for the all three tires. Let's see if things get worse in the wet. Well, the good news is I don't need to spend as much time explaining to you the differences because they're the same as dry. The run flat, normal and sealed tire were less than a second apart in wet handling and in wet braking, less than 0.1 meter, which is essentially the same. I, I, even for testing the same tire, this is impressively close. The dynamic differences were less pronounced in the wet, as you would imagine, because you put less forces through the tires, but they were still roughly the same. The run flat did still have slightly sharper steering and the run flat did still have slightly less communication as you were braking into a slide. I don't know whether it's you just get less vibrations through the side, well, this is me theorizing now, but it's definitely a thing and it might be why BMW don't allow run flats on their M cars. Who knows? If anyone knows anyone at BMW M Division, please get in touch because I'd be fascinated to have a conversation about tyres and run flats at BMW M. This, to me at least, has firmly put to bed the myth that run flats are bad in the wet. Yes, some run flats can be bad in the wet, but I think that's down to either the tyre choice uh, or the OE demand. So I'm wondering if that's why, because these tyres these run flat tires have exactly the same compound as the normal tire I'm testing and the seal tire I'm testing and the outright grip is identical. So, fair play to the run flat for this one. So far I've enjoyed it, but comfort is next. Comfort might be the big one. Instead of trying to describe the sound of each tire, we recorded the regular run flat and seal tire across three different services so you can make your own mind up. Myers, at least, there's almost nothing in it. Comfort is another thing that's very difficult to talk about on camera. However, thankfully, Hankook have this amazing system of step ups and step downs and triangular shape and square shape impacts, each with a different height, so nine to 24 millimeters or six to 24 millimeters on each step. And that has allowed me to judge when you could start feeling the impact and when the impact became what I'd call harsh to the cabin. And the grading between the two, I'll put the data on the screen, the grading was identical on some of the impact shapes and it was very, very close in favor of the normal tire on others. So the normal tire did just round out certain impacts a little bit better than the run flats. In other situations, they felt almost the same. Now, moving to the very big impacts, the middle to big impacts, like the raised drain hole covers, the potholes, the really poor roadworks that you get in certain countries. This is the surprise. On the big stuff, the really big stuff, the normal tire rounded it out better. No questions asked. Although it was only maybe five or 10%. So this kind of stuff, the bub, 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 bub. The moderate impact, which is what I would call most, most, harsh impacts on the road, I would say the run flat actually had a small advantage. Why? The normal tire would have the advantage there. Why? Because while the run flat had a higher peak impact through the cabin, the normal tire 
because it wasn't quite as well supported in the sidewall and the tread, the normal tire made the impact longer. And it really was noticeable through the rear axle of this car, especially on the, like, the very harsh surfaces, where you just get a bit more shake at the rear, the rear suspension you could feel doing a bit more work. Whereas on the run flat, while that peak was higher, it was shorter, so it's high down. When the normal tire was not quite as high, but it carried on going for a little bit and then came back down. So in certain situations, the run flat tire was more comfortable, which is crazy. The very small stuff and the very big stuff, the normal tire does still have the advantage, but it's not as night and day as I've experienced previously in old generation run flats. With the differences between the fourth generation run flat and a regular tire closer than ever, there's only really one question left to answer. Okay, as this run flat has been so exceptional in all the tests, I'm starting to wonder whether it can actually be used as a run flat because if they've taken all the material out of the sidewall to make it compliant, to make it drive like a normal tire or as close as possible to a normal tire, and it has been very impressive, can it still be a run flat? So I'm just gonna test it. Hand Cooker very kindly allowed me to deflate a tire. I've taken the core out so it has absolutely no air in whatsoever. And I'm just gonna drive, see what my first impressions are. And then I'm gonna drive for essentially 80, kilometers an hour for about an hour to see whether the tire falls apart whether it fails before then and just try and use it as i would in the real world and explain what i'm experiencing first up the car is pulling i've done the right front and the car is pulling slightly to the ever so slightly to the right and there's definitely some noticeable noise uh, on that right front which wasn't there before. You can, you can hear that it's running flat, but at the moment I'm on, on a two degree left camber and the car's steering straight. So this is why run flats have to come with TPMS sensors because you could quite easily drive along, I'm doing 80 kilometers an hour, which is 50 miles an hour, 52 miles an hour. And apart from a little bit of extra noise, I could quite easily be convinced that this is normal. Look, I absolutely on a flat road now, that ever that's all i need to straighten up the car tiny amount of movement so i'm coming up to an area where i can it's a little bit wider and i can do some lane changes so that'll be interesting but generally thank you v-box oh okay so under higher cornering load it's is a bit more obvious so that way is fine and that way is a lot slower to steer you don't get as much cornering force from the deflated tires but i am doing 81 kilometers an hour which is over spec and i'm doing lane changes and i have full control of the car that's incredible you join me now at 4 30 and if i'm perfectly honest i can't quite remember what time i started i think it was 3 10 so i've been going about an hour 20 minutes on a flat tire most of that at 80 kilometers an hour because i have now done nearly 90 kilometers in total on a flat tire i've gone above and beyond what would ever happen on the road to try and kill this tire as i said i've been doing lane changes i'm still an hour 25 minutes into it i'm still doing lane changes at 90 kilometers an hour no one would do that if they had a flat tire warning i've done an emergency stop which isn't advised but the car still stopped very quickly but i think it was quite damaging to the tire because i put two thick black lines where the shoulders dug into the tarmac i'll put a photo on screen but also don't tell hancock i took i went on their ride and comfort lanes and there was a crack through the car that sounded like wheels i might have dented the wheel i'm very sorry but here we are still going 90 kilometers an hour this system is incredible I kind of feel like this has made me a bit of a run flat convert, but let's go and take the tire off the wheel and have a look at what it looks like inside next to one that hasn't been run flat. And then I'm going to need at least an evening to collect my thoughts of the previous two days testing. These are the two tires that sadly died in service, RIP tire bros. I thought it'd be interesting to look at this because from the outside, the run flat, bearing in mind I tried my best to destroy it, I've run it over and beyond what it's specified to do. From the outside, it still looks fine, but you see from the inside, you can tell why you just can't repair run flat tires. This tire cannot be used safely again. I have destroyed it on the inside. This is the seal tire. Now it does look a little bit worse for wear admittedly, but that's because to get the GoPro out safely, we had to cut the sidewalls out. But you can see the enter points here of the nails. We've seen them go all the way through. And from the inside, 
you can see absolutely nothing. The seal has taken the puncture and just sealed itself. Incredible technology, incredible technology, both offering above and beyond the safety of a normal tire. Some things we haven't yet discussed about the qualities of these tires. Aquaplaning performance, well, they're very similar, but the run flat tire should have a slight advantage because of the stiffer construction, slightly smaller footprint. Rolling resistance of the three tires, this is where the run flat tire does have a small disadvantage, around 10% in most test data I've seen. Tread life, I've actually seen that they're essentially the same, but I have actually seen the run flat tire having the tiniest advantage in one test, so you're not getting any worse tread life, but you are paying a little bit more. The run flat tire and the sealed tire, they're usually around 15 to 20% more expensive than the regular tire. In terms of safety, we know how they work. You've seen that the run flat tire absolutely can run flat and the sealed tire does protect from nails. But in terms of raw ultimate safety, the run flat tire does have the advantage. Because of the three tires, it's the only tire that can take issues with the sidewall. The seal tire is only puncture proof in the tread area. Anything at the apex or the sidewall is going to cause a deflation. And the run flat tire is the only tire you can run on deflated. The seal tire, if you would get a puncture there or you get a cut in the tire where it's just too much for the sealant to work, this tire will go down and you can't run on it like a regular tire. Whereas a run flat, it will get you safely back to where you're going. So that's the advantage of the run flat tire. As for the disadvantages, this fourth generation run flat tire is hugely impressive. Forget everything you know about old generation run flats. This tire can be fitted to a normal wheel. You can fit it to your regular car. This is just a normal Golf. We're using normal VW wheels. The run flat tire fits no problem. It is the ultimate safety and you don't have as much issues in terms of comfort, noise, handling, wet grip. Most of those don't exist. There is still some reduction in comfort but it's so slight now, I think a lot of people would be really happy. And if safety is important to you, this is the option. But let's not forget just how incredible this product is, the seal tire. You can literally drive over nails. We did eight nails and the tire didn't lose any pressure. I don't know why this product isn't more popular on the market because to me, I know it's a little bit more expensive, but it has no other drawbacks because it's literally a normal tire with a seal product inside and it can take nails and nails. One of the most common causes of deflations is a puncture, a nail through the tire, and it, it brushes it off like it's nothing. So I don't know why this product isn't more popular. I think it should be in the future. I know VW especially are starting to put this as OE on some of their cars, and hopefully as things progress, the tire companies will be putting this more in the aftermarket. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this test. Thank you once again to Hankook for making this tire, especially for the test and for having confidence in their fourth generation run flat product. It's an incredible product. Their new test facility in South Korea is incredible. It's just showing all the investment Hankook are making in tires and why they are quickly becoming one of the best manufacturers of tires. Any questions, please do ask below. Let me know your experiences with run flat tires and whether they're old generation or new generation products. And as always, safe motoring.